Good evening. Now this is a bit of a departure for me because what we're going to be doing this evening is making a range extender for Norbea Gain or for any other bike that has the e-bike motion or Marley as it's now known system. Now the only reason I'm even attempting this is because other people have done it before. Um, I mean, I'm on a couple of forums online. Fora? Forums? I'm on a couple of forums online and uh, some guys have done it already. Um, it only works because we believe that the uh, Orbea Gain, etc, etc, with that system, it has within it a method of protecting the internal battery from an overvoltage that could come from a second battery. Now, the reason why we think this is because the Orbea Gain was originally designed to have a secondary range extender battery that works in parallel. Now, what they came up with eventually was a mini battery charger, um, which doesn't have a fantastic range. Um, and the other problem is that it charges the internal battery as you ride, but at a maximum of two amps. Now, if you're going up a hill, you could be drawing seven, eight, ten amps from your battery. And so you could, can actually run out of charge, even though there could still be charge left in your range extender battery. Now, the way that uh, this system should work is that it runs in parallel. So the two batteries essentially become one. The second battery I've bought is a seven amp hour battery. So it should double the range, simple as that. But um, the other big thing is that when you need a range extender, it's because you're on a long ride. And when you're on a long ride, you need two bottles of water. So you use a range extender, but you still only end up with one bottle of water for such a long ride. Well, I want two bottles of water and I want my tools and I want a range extender. So the only thing I could come up with and still keep it fairly stealthy was by putting it in a saddlebag. It's the only other bulky thing that really appears on a bike, isn't it? So Sod's law of course dictates that I'm in a room with a washing machine and the washing machine is on spin, but I can't wait because I'm too impatient. Anyway, I was just showing you this because the battery will fit in a saddlebag that size. So if you want to go super, super, super duper stealthy and keep your spare inner tube in your back pocket along with your tire levers, then the battery will fit inside that. And then it, you, wouldn't, you just wouldn't see it. Of course, the cable is going to be visible. So I'm going to be running out down the, the back of the frame and into the, uh, into the charge port down there. Now I'm far from a pro. So not only is my methodology going to be rough and ready, but so is my filming, because my filming is going to be my cheap action cam attached to the top of a bottle of water. But hopefully it's going to work OK and you can see what I'm getting up to. OK, now the things that I've already bought that I need for this range extender are the battery. This came from eBay. I bought this one because it came from Germany. It has Samsung cells within it. It's designed for a hoverboard. The reason why I bought this particular one is not so that it can fit inside a bottle battery, but because I'm gonna fit it inside a saddlebag. Now this is a quite a, 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 an oversized saddlebag because I still want to keep my tools when I go for a ride. Now the battery has a combined discharge and charge port. This is an XT60 connector. These are industry high standard. They can take up to 60 amps. We don't need anything like that, but they are good and reliable and they're easy to solder. But what other people have done is that they've chosen a battery which has a separate discharge and a charge port. That would mean there'd be another cable coming off with a, probably a smaller plug on it. And the advantage of that would be that I could fit this inside my saddlebag and I can leave the uh, discharge port connected to the bike and then I could use one charger to charge this battery and because it's connected directly to the Orbea, I could charge them both batteries at the same time using one charger which is going to be quite a lot easier than what I end up doing here. There's a point I've been trying to make in this film and I keep not quite making it. 
What's important to know is that if you have an additional battery connected to your e-bike motion battery at all times, you're reducing the wear and tear on that internal battery. And the internal battery is just about the most expensive thing that can go wrong with your bike. So quite simply, by leaving your range extender battery connected, not only are you extending your range, you're also extending the life of that internal battery. So, other than this battery, I've got some whole bunch of XT60 connectors, both male and female. I've got some uh, heat shrink tubing, which we'll need later, basically just to neaten up the installation. I've got a small button switch, and that is because I don't want the uh, additional battery to be on when I plug it into the bike. I want to be able to plug it in and then turn it on, which would leave any sparking inside this button as opposed to inside the bike. That's if there is any sparking. Now this is the key part of the whole thing. This is a, an ideal diode. This is like a one-way valve. The only thing this does is it's going to protect the additional battery if the battery inside the gain is at a higher voltage than the external battery when I plug it in. Because what happens if there is a difference in voltage between two batteries that are being plugged in in parallel is that one will instantaneously try to equalize its voltage with the other, which could cause a huge surge of amps and it could easily burn out the cables that we have inside the bike and that we're going to be using for our wiring and obviously if it's such a high surge of amps power it could cause a fire and we don't want a fire so this needs to be wired in in line from the battery into the bike this was a, an aliexpress special and it cost uh, four euros fifty i think they're about 18 if you buy them in europe it's actually for um, a solar power system um, it's for the same thing it's to stop um, voltage going back to your solar panels I believe. Okay next up is we actually need to cut this you'll recognize this this is the Orbea charger cord we need to use this plug because it's almost impossible to get hold of these and this is what we need to connect the battery to the bike so we're going to be cutting this cord off and we're going to be swapping this this plug with an XT 60 connector so that we can charge up the um, internal battery using one of these rather than this which will stay attached to the bike from now on. It has a, this locking ring which should prevent it being pulled out etc. Now that's all the hardware that you'll need but you'll also need whoop, a soldering iron, some solder and some soldering flux. It's also going to be an excellent idea to have a voltmeter because even irrespective of whatever um, protective diodes you're putting into the system, nothing's going to happen if you can make sure that the batteries, the two batteries, are almost identical charges when you plug them together, when you plug them in. So I've made the first terrifying move and I've cut 70 centimeter length of the e-bike motion uh, charger cable and I'm now going to uh, just expose the end wires here so I can start um, wiring in all my bits and bobs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wire up um, a connector, an XT60 male connector, no female connector, my mistake, so that we can hook into this battery which has got a male XT60. The uh, positive is always the square side, the negative is always the rounded side. So positive, negative. So the first thing we do is we just tin the connector. Let's do the positive first. We're just going to tin the connector with just using a little bit of a little bit of solder in the uh, into this uh, bit here. No doubt you electronics types have already spotted my rookie error. This is solder for plumbing, not for electronics. 
So what you will need is to buy some lead-based solder, not the silver-based stuff that I'm using here, or tried to use here. My mistake, before you actually apply heat to this, it's still quite a, a small and flimsy little thing. What you're trying to do is, if you actually put the two parts together, of your male and female, so I'm trying to wire in this female part, if you actually push the two parts together, the second part works as a heat sink. So when you're heating up to actually put some tin into these connectors, it doesn't um, melt the plastic around it. So once I've, um, once I've just soldered that uh, little bit of wire onto the positive, I put some heat shrink over it and just used a lighter just underneath to play it just to, just to make that neat. And at the other end, it's gone into the in on the uh, ideal diode and uh, that's just wrapped around and uh, screwed down tight and then clamped off. So the next thing we're going to wire up is the, is the push button switch. Just a quick aside about the switch. It was incredibly fiddly to wire up. Just the size of the terminals was too tiny for my fat fingers. And in retrospect, it's not altogether necessary. It's very much an option, particularly if you chose the battery, which has a separate discharge and charge port, because you'll be leaving the uh, battery connected all the time. So you don't actually need to switch it on and off. It's also unnecessary if you're going to be, as you should, be using a voltmeter to check that the batteries, the two batteries are almost identical voltage, in which case there won't be any sparking and you don't really need the switch at all. So that's uh, positive to positive. It comes out negative, but it's still positive. So the positive is gonna go on to the, right, this is a four way, this is a lit, this has got a little LED behind it so you know when it's on and when it's off. So um, there's a positive and there's a negative um, pin on these. Uh, the positive is what needs to go off and carry on. Um, the negative, everything is shared negative with DC. So from the negative here, from the battery, from here, it's gonna, it's actually gonna go via this little, um, this ground just here on the ideal diode. Well, I'll show you that later. And that's gonna connect to the negative on here and that'll go onto the negative uh, of the device, so battery, diode, switch, uh, device, which in this case is actually is the the, the plug. Um, all of that is negative. You know, every, all the all the negatives connect up together. So on this four-way switch that we've got, sorry, a four-pin switch that we have, there's a positive marked on this top pin and a negative on the bottom pin. On well, the negative, as we know is all negative. The other three are all various positives. It's because when the switch is on, we want the light to come on. So the way that's done is that we have our um, positive that's coming from the battery through the ideal diode. It comes in to this left-hand pin. We're then gonna pop a little bit of, uh, if I can find it, we're gonna pop a bit of uh, heat shrink over that, and then, so that will keep that one separate. And then the, the final connection on the positive side is going to be from the e-bike motion plug. And at the other end, we're going to have the positive again. And that is going to connect both of those two pins together and go off. And that way, when the positive comes in, it, when the switch is on, the light will come on. And when you press it off, the switch and the light will both be off. And as I said, the negative will go to the negative, and then there's going to be a lead from here, bypassing the ideal diode, and into that one there. So for this connection here, we're just going to strip off a fair bit of this uh, insulation on this part. Give it a twist, actually, it might take a bit more off there. Dogs are going crazy because we've got boar out in the garden this evening. There we go. Give that a twist. I always wrap it round here first. It's that way around. No, that way around. 
make it nice and tight around there. Like that. Pop it through the little copper connector there. And I can just get screwed in. And tight and then we can just close these with a pair of pliers just to keep it tight I'll just give it a little nip with a if I can find them there they are. just give it a little nip as well Belt on braces. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. And we're just going to carry on with the connectors on this on this switch and then uh, and then the negative and then that's actually it done. So all that there is inside this bag is um, it's a fishing lure box. Rapala, obviously. Um, and inside the box is the ideal diode. Um, I've shown you how to wire that in and at the end is the XC60 that connects to the battery and the whole lot shoves down into the bag I'm quite glad I left the extra cable because it means that now I can if I need to I can uh, actually access this diode again because otherwise it would have been crammed tight in at the front end of this bag and I'd never be able to slide it back out again and there the battery charger looks like this and it now has an XT60 connector on the end of it so that I can hook it up to the connector which is inside the bag so in fact that's probably the one thing you can see so this is what it looks like on the bike I've left this uh, piece of cable a bit longer at the moment in case I need to do something else so I've just left it a bit longer so it does look a little bit messy and it's just cable tied to the frame at the moment and as I said previously what I was thinking of doing is actually having it wired inside this little plug uh, and then having the cable one up inside the frame which would make it very tidy but at the moment it's just that original charger cable and a saddle wag which doesn't look unlike a normal saddle because it is a normal saddle bag and the light came on so it looks as though the system is up and running and it should all be now as one two batteries in parallel let's see let's take it for a spin so after a quick connection issue I'm out on my first ride with a range extender and I've chosen my go-to hill which is the it's my closest hill actually it's four and a half five kilometers long it averages at about 4.2 percent it's featured in at least three of these videos but it's the best test to try out what's changed with this range extender now the uh, connection issue was a very basic one other guys who have made these have said you must turn the range extender on first before turning on the uh, the bike well, no, it's the opposite. So I turned on, or rather I plugged in the range extender. It hasn't got a switch yet. I bought the wrong switch. Um, so I plugged in the range extender. The, uh, the light on the iWalk button came on. I thought, fantastic, it's connected, it's talking to each other. But when I actually tried to use the motor, there was nothing. And I couldn't even change the power setting using the iWalk button, it just stayed that whitish blue colour that comes on when you start it. Uh, switching the bike on first and then plugging in the range extender, everything's fine. So the biggest question for me about this range extender system that I've sorted is its placement. It's The battery weighs just over a kilo and I've got it underneath the saddle. Now my concern was that uh, 
when you're standing in the pedals to climb is it going to be a horrendous uh, unbalancing of the bike so it's going to be the first thing to check so let's do that now okay here we go I'm not really a big thrower of the bike around when I do stand in the pedals. I can't actually say I'm noticing that weight there at all. I'm amazed. I thought it'd be significant having the weight at the, at the end of the lever, if you like, right under the saddle. But no, I'm not, I'm not feeling that as I'm pass. I think that's a big tick. Fabulous. Now we need to see whether it is actually going to extend my range, hopefully double my range. So though I'm climbing the same hill as before, it was actually uh, the last time I did this was when I was making the All Bay Again review video. I joked when I got to the top about looking at the numbers, etc., which was a, a euphemism for sort of wheezing and needing a breather when you get to the top of a hill but in fact I did look at the numbers things have changed from then sorry the sun was probably right behind me uh, the biggest is that I'm lighter now um, but of course the bike's slightly heavier with the battery so uh, I'll need to take that into account so I'm just grinding my way up the 9% piece at the top of the climb it's every bit as hard as before <laughs> so it uh, obviously there's no improvement to the power although I did read that someone suggested you did actually get more power from having a range extender wide in parallel I can't really see why and I'm certainly not finding it any easier but I'm still in level 2 it's still set to 80% of its maximum so it's uh, it's the same test as before. I don't know if that's visible, but it's suggesting I've got 84% uh, left, so I've used 16%. I'm cycling along, trying to uh, crunch the numbers. I thought that uh, as I've got nothing else going on in my mind, just toodling along, I'd be able to work it out, but I can't. But I do know that uh, this range extender could be quite a game changer. But uh, I'd be happy if I can comfortably go over a thousand meters and not be uh, worried. So uh, that's obviously the next test and probably the next film is going to be find a thousand meter climb and go up it. But when we do get back, I'll get my calculator out and I'll see what sort of difference this range extender's given me. But really, this is ridiculously simple. You know, these guys are charging 500 euros for essentially a battery and an ideal diode. And I'm not even sure if they're using something as good as an ideal diode. They might be using a shot key diode, which works in the same way, like a one-way valve. Um, is infinitely smaller, I've got to say. Much, 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 much smaller. And cheaper. I think they're 80, 90 cents. But if you wired a shot key diode directly onto the positive between the battery and the plug, whatever battery you have, that would work. As long as it's a 36 volt battery, of course, it must match the voltage of the existing battery. So on today's climb, we gained 240 meters and that used 16% of the range extender <laughs> range extender and the internal battery's capacity. Previously, when I did the same climb, I used 33% of the internal battery. So it's slightly better than twice the capacity. Better than that though, uh, nothing caught fire, neither did I, uh, and the system works. It works and it cost 120 euros. But perhaps the best thing about the range extender battery is that because it works in parallel, it reduces the strain on the internal battery. So it will last longer. But I hope you found this video useful. 
Thanks for watching.